Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today's upload is going to be my video on who'll see the coldest temperatures this year or this winter, 2018-2019. And if you saw my video from last or a couple days ago, uh, it was who'll see the snowiest winter this year. This video, the reasoning behind it is very similar because I used the cold um, the, you know, the outlook for the cold to basically predict, okay, if it's colder in this location, then, and we, we view the precipitation, then most likely we will be looking at, you know, a snowier winter. But this time around, basically every single slide is very similar. Every single slide is almost the same. So if you want to skip the reasoning behind this, you want to skip the scientific evidence, what I have, you could go to somewhere around a 10 and 9, 11 minute mark. Somewhere in that ballpark, I think, will be my final forecast. But if you'd like to stay and watch this whole thing, then thank you and enjoy. So if you like if you like this channel, um, if you like these type of videos, then consider subscribing to my channel, consider liking the video. And <clears throat> if you're an older turning member but you haven't subscribed yet, then you know, consider or older turning viewer but you haven't subscribed yet, I'm just letting you know it's there for a reason. If you're a new viewer, this is the first video you're watching, well then consider uh, checking on my channel and then you could subscribe if you want to. So again, the factors are very same, very similar. Uh, Ian, SO outlook, Enzo outlook, analogs. This one actually, no seasonal outlook is not in this forecast either and other forecasts. The reason why I don't have this NOAA seasonal outlook in this forecast is because I just feel like um, NOAA's seasonal outlook is just not the greatest. It, it's just not the best in predicting stuff. Uh, it's just, it changes basically um, things completely around. It would change my forecast completely around if I put this into the account of that. So, First off, let's look at the Enzo outlook. You can see Enzo neutral is favored through August through October 2018, so we're not going to worry about that since this is about winter. So mainly what's going to be impacting winter is an El Nino. El Nino chances are 65 to 70 <clears> percent <throat> during Northern Hemisphere winter 2018-2019. So you could see, oh sorry about that, so you could see that November December, January, December, January, February, and January, February, March. All the winter months are in an El Nino phase, or they're, you know, most likely to be in an El Nino phase. At this point, the chances for a neutral staying and persisting during the winter months are fairly low. They're about 30% chance. So they are there. It could be possible, but at this point, um, at this point, they don't seem likely, and an El Nino is most likely going to happen. So now, if you're wondering what an El Nino is, is or what it means for your location. Well, an El Nino typical pattern impacts the United States something like this. There's a big low sitting right up here in the, usually up here in the Alaska Gulf, and it sends this jet stream way up here, sending warm air into the northern U.S. and drier into the northern U.S., and then only like the top maybe 5% of the United States in the northeast gets some cooler air, while most of that cold air is locked up into Canada. And we also see wet and cool across the south with this subtropical jet nosing itself a little bit further to the north. So um, sometimes with these systems, if the uh, jet stream or the polar jet stream connects with this subtropical jet on some occasions it could produce big storms but I'll talk about that later on in the forecast so um, we also need to look at the this is another factor the strength of an El Nino so you could see most models all these statistical average DYN average and a CPC console those are the three main averages of these things the three most important ones you can see they keep it below one and some of them bring it up to 1.5 which would make it a moderate El Nino but most of it still keep it as a weak so whether it's weak to moderate El Nino a weak to moderate El Nino brings something like this to the United States versus something like this so there are some differences you can see that the northern northwestern now section of the United States is warm, and <clears throat> like I was talking about with this with this polar polar jet making its way down with this subtropical jet making its way up, they could merge sometimes. Merging branches can't produce big eastern snowstorms as there it just requires one big system to be riding along either of those things, and it just explodes with moisture. And given that cold air that could make it in with that. Um, it, there could be quite a bit of snow for the East Coast. So um, that is very interesting, and we'll need to take a 
look at this for, I mean, that's basically the snow is just, you know, for the school to see the snowiest winter. But the cold shots, you could see with a weak to moderate El Nino, cold shots are much more prevalent across the northeast or northern United States. So that is something to keep in mind if it's going to be weak. And now this is, uh, if you're wondering what a uh, what an El Nino is in the first place, it's basically when the waters off the South American coast, off of Peru, are above average in terms of um, water temp. So you can see that the water temperatures during an El Nino are way above average here, and they're eastern-based, looking at the whole Pacific Ocean, which extends <clears throat> from East Oceania all the way to South America in this sector. And you can see that the warm waters are eastern-based, while during an El Nino Modoka, which I'll explain in just a minute why this matters, uh, the waters are centrally based, and this is called a central-based El Nino, while some of the waters here by the South American coast, keep this in mind, this will be very important, while some of the waters here are cooler than average, so that there's some differences. Now, looking at the current sea surface temperatures, which I pulled off a couple of days ago, you could see that it's not really either. There's warm waters by the coast right here, so it doesn't make it an Lino Madokai. There's, it's not eastern-based either. It's more central-based, and it is cooler by uh, East Asia. So that may be a little bit of a Modokai El Nino forming. And actually, if you were to look at some of the weather models showing, they were showing very, very cool, drastic um, anomalies here across this part of the country where these water temperatures for the past couple of weeks have been actually dropping. So maybe that is indicating something of an El Nino Modokai. And if you're wondering what even on earth does an El Nino Modokai do in terms of precip, which this doesn't again really matter too much um, with this cool, see the coldest temperatures. I just still wanted to show you guys. So you could see an El Nino during an El Nino, which we saw is this one right here. It is drier across you know, much of the eastern the board of the United States and the northern part of the United States and wetter in the central and the northwestern. And then during a Modokai El Nino, you can see it's wetter across the areas that are drier and drier across the areas that are wetter, basically. And so those are a little bit two different things that could be bringing us some more snow with the El Nino Modoki for the eastern part of the United States, at least, and less for the western if cooler temperatures are also uh, available with that and this is actually a okay so I'll show you the week the two mo sorry so I'll show you the Modoka El Nino anomalies when it comes to temperatures in just a minute but I first want to show you remember the week to moderate El Nino that could be happening with that with those snowstorms potentially across the east coast well typically I just took a bunch of um El Ni week El Nino years and I compiled them over November through March to um see not see uh just air temperatures surface air temperature anomalies and you can see it's generally average for a huge chunk of the country and a little bit warmer across the um the northwest but again nothing too insane but um you can see some cooler spots across the north um across the north some across the south so generally average so with this cold air being somewhere in between we may not we may not be seeing a completely cold winter across the north at least in northern part of the country, while well, the southeastern, which I'll show you in just a minute, may be in for, you know, quite a big, uh, quite a cooler winter, actually, than compared to the rest of the country, even though it's shown here as average also. So looking at an El Nino now, see, I took a bunch of El Nino years, November to March. Uh, I have, you can see that there's it's warmer across the northern part of the country, so this is just goes to show you how El Nino versus weak El Nino, even though they have the same two word, last two words in their name, they, they cause ma major differences. So warmer across the north, cooler or average across the south, and that leads to potentially more snow if there's more moisture available. And we saw with a um, with a El Nino, there is a little bit more moisture available in the south, so that could be more snow. But now to finally show you the El Nino Modokai, you could see during an El Nino Modokai, um, the November to March 29, 2010, this is just one year. I know I should have probably done more years, but if I were to compile, which I have already, but I didn't include this picture in here, more Modokai years, this pattern is very similar. Just the southeastern part of the country or the southeastern southern part of the country, a huge part of the southeastern part of the country is below average, while the rest is right around average, maybe the parts of the northern country being above, slightly above average. So, um, you can see that Modoka is probably the most aggressive in terms of being below average 
and above average because quite a bit of locations are actually above, uh, not quite a bit, but you can see that northern Maine is actually fairly above average, almost three degrees above average. But I decided to, um, you know, compile kind of all of these three together and see what comes out the best. But first, before I show you the final forecast, I wanted to look at um, AccuWeather weather, uh, winter highlights and you can see that in terms of cold they have cold shots across here wet and chilly wintry mixed cold and mild periods so very you know around average maybe a little bit cooler as we go to the southeast so it shouldn't be anything record-breaking in terms of cold this winter I don't think and you can see the west a little bit uh, drier milder so a little bit um, warmer in terms of their temperatures so I'd also look, like to look at that farmers almanac you can see I don't really like these uh, these farmer al almanac predictions because it seems like every year they have biting cold and freezing temperatures across you know these part of the country this part of the country but I'll still factor it into here you can see teeth chattering colds for the plains biting cold for the Midwest chilly for the mid-atlantic cold for the Northeast near normal temps actually for the southeast which I need to disagree with and Stinging cold for the uh, south, so just the southern U.S., and they have pretty warm um, for the west. So now my final outlook looks something like this. You could see I have actually, just take a look at this, find your location. I won't really be explaining this much. Find your location, and you could choose, uh, like say you live in North Carolina, you'll be, at, at these, these numbers mean degrees. I think for the whole winter, you'll be three degrees below average. Obviously, you'll have some warmer periods, some colder periods, but overall, I think it will be coldest across this part of the southeast, this darkest shade. Now, this lighter blue should be two degrees below average, and in this um, lightest blue, it should be one degree below average. And in here, it could be either a little bit below average, a little bit above average, leaving it in white. And here it should be a little bit warmer than average. So um, that is that. Hopefully you enjoyed. Take a look at this forecast one more time. Good. Um, is this going to be 100% right? Probably not, but it's a fairly good educated guess at this point. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you all guys in the next episode.